remember we had but just a boy how the saints would testify how God had brought him through another trial how Jesus had been walking by the side they would tell about the blood of Calvary how it saved them from their sin somebody would stand to their feet and shout
Dixie Melody boy. We got us a West Virginian up here. Pastor. How about that? He comes to us from Anstead, West Virginia. Been singing with his family over there in the hills most of his life, but we're thrilled to have him as a part of our group right now. He is the greatest tenor singer that you've never heard. We're going to fix that right now. His name is Jerry Skaggs. Welcome, Jerry, tonight. Sing one, Jerry.
so much. You know, I wasn't going to do this uh, tonight, but so many of you stopped me when I came in the door this evening, and so many of you, I know, have been praying over the last year. I don't know if you remember us being here at this time last year, but I was going through the scariest situation that I've ever personally been in, uh, and we didn't know the prognosis as at that time. Uh, when we sang here last, it was just a week, a week, maybe two weeks after we sang here, I found out that I did, in fact, have a polyp on my vocal cord. And if you don't know what that means, a polyp on a vocal cord of a singer, the only way I can describe it to you is like taking an NFL quarterback and chopping his arms off. He's useless. He can't do his job. And that's what I felt like. I felt useless. Friends, I was low. I was in a dark, dark place because this is all I've ever done. Uh, I, I, it jokes, but it's true. I got off a school bus and got on a quartet bus. I've never done anything. You never had a public job. Never. <laughs> I don't know how you people do it. It's <laughs> And, and so many have asked what happened, what, what was the story. And I'd love to be able to stand here and tell you that the Lord reached down with his divine, almighty, powerful hand and touched that polyp and removed it. That's not my story. But like that song says, the Lord will make a way somehow. And I'm so thankful that he blessed man with a mind and intelligence to come up with new technologies and, and new ways to do things. Friends, I went to Atlanta, Georgia at the Emory University Hospital. I sat down in a chair. That doctor ran one tube down that side of my nose, another tube down that side of my nose, zapped that little booger off. Five minutes later, I was driving home. Less than a year later, I'm standing here at Lake Gibson singing for you folks just about as good as I ever had in my life. <laughs> and I gave him all the praise for it. I thank the Lord for all that he's done and brought me through. And I'm not 100%. I didn't regain everything. But uh, I tell you what, even if it's 95, 94%, I'm going to give him all the glory and all the honor and all the praise because it belongs to him. Amen. So thank you for all of your prayers. Keep praying. Keep praying for the Dixie Melody. We've had a, a rough couple of months anyway. I, he normally doesn't sit down like this, but you see him all hobbled up here. He, his, his foot's gone bad on him. His back's gone bad on him. And, uh, I mean, he's had all kinds of problems. And I'll tell you what I think happened about a month and a half ago. We took him down to Mexico. And he's not been the same since, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think I ever will be. No. <laughs> Anybody been to Mexico and spent some time, let me see your hand. Well, you may like that food, I don't know. All these guys do. When they go in there, I go to McDonald's or somewhere, I can't handle it. And all I had to eat was Mexican food. And I thought to myself, if I had to live here, and eat that kind of food, I'd be crossing the border coming over here too. <laughs> 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 Oh, 
say, don't worry about me. I'm just a good old Ladies and gentlemen, he's only 25 years old. He does everything fast. And that includes operating a motor vehicle, if you know what I mean. Oh, yes. It was our first trip of this year, 2018, just after our Christmas break. We were going up to West Virginia, Pennsylvania, up in that part of the country. And uh, that vehicle we've got out there, it's got a rule. You don't drive it over 60 miles an hour. Keeps the vehicle in better shape, and hopefully it keeps us in better shape, you know. Well, like the old saying goes, when the cat's away, the mice will play. And Brother Ed's got to go to bed every once in a while. But Willie pulled the night shift that night at about 3 o'clock in the morning. The rest of us were in bed. The old guys were sleeping. I was still up, though, praying, ladies and gentlemen, because we were not driving down that interstate. We were flying down that interstate. I have absolutely no idea what speed he was driving, but we were getting it done, let me tell you. And then all of a sudden, we came to a complete stop. And I knew what had happened. He got caught. Uh -huh. I heard that West Virginia trooper laughing as he comes up the side of our automobile. But I told you, Willie, he's fast. Now listen to me. He rolls the window down. That trooper gets up and he says, <laughs> I've been waiting for you all night, boy. <laughs> Willie looks over and he says, well, I got here as fast as I could. <laughs> Calls him Leadfoot. You've heard that before. 
which is funny because Ed, he's got that nerve and rock with him. We call him Deadfoot. But uh, you want to hear old Leadfoot sing one tonight? Would that be all right? All right, Leadfoot, sing one. All right, I'm going to need your help now. Come on.